Good. All right. All right, friends. Uh, welcome uh, to uh, day number two, uh, History 101. Let's talk first about uh, some class announcements, uh, some things that uh, you can uh, jot down. You can, um, like I said, watch this later uh, if you uh, feel like you're uh, missing something. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, some things here. Uh, many of you uh, are doing and have done uh, great work so far on uh, the uh, first forum post, which is due by class time uh, next Tuesday. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so remember, you got, you know, the rest of the weekend to work on it, uh, that type of thing uh, at, your, uh, at your leisure. Uh, I will try uh, my hardest uh, to uh, get uh, comments and assessment up on all of those um, ASAP. On all the activities, on all the learning activities and all the assignments, and I've had a couple questions about this. At the top of the Canvas page, like of the assignment, there's like three little dots that appear vertically, okay? If you click on that, you'll be able to see the scoring rubric, meaning what I'm gonna use to assess and throw points up on your assignment. Okay, so uh, feel free to click on that uh, to review it, to look at it uh, and see kind of what I'm looking for on all these different types of uh, activities that we're doing. Okay, um, and then uh, that'll make, um, I think, answering uh, some of these uh, things a little bit more smooth. Um, but that being said, uh, here's the big announcement for next week coming up. Okay. Um, Next Tuesday at 11 and next Thursday at 11, and I'll put this in the chat too so you can, you can kind of see it. It's always uh, easier to see things and hear things. Um, on next Tuesday and next Thursday at uh, 11 a.m., we are not going to be meeting here on Zoom, all right? Why? Uh, I'm not going to be able to because of various scheduling things going on on campus and other things that I have to do um, family-wise. I'm not going to be able to meet for our 40, 45 minutes on Tuesday or Thursday at 11 o'clock. Does everybody understand that? Can I get some head shakes? Okay. Uh, that is not that big a deal. Um, everything will be up on Canvas to start the week in learning module number one. Okay. So uh, everything for the week uh, will be in, I'll put this on here, uh, will be in uh, learning module number one. Okay, uh, so no worries on that. Um, what's next week going to look like? Let's just talk about that for a minute. Um, I will be available to talk with you, um, you know, if you want to do like a, if you got like a questions that you want to ask me like via Zoom, perfectly fine. I'll be available during the days on those things, but uh, more often just send me a Canvas message or an email and I'll be uh, very available during next week. It's just I'm not going to be available at 11 a.m. on those days. Okay. Um, so ask me whatever questions you have, those types of things. Uh, secondly, on that module, uh, everything is going to be up there that you need to work on for the week. Okay. Um, there's going to be a, a few different types of things. So, um, you know, for reading, uh, getting into the reading of uh, the, the text that's up there on our uh, main uh, uh, web page. Um, if you want to, and it would be awesome, uh, start making your way through uh, chapter one and chapter two over the weekend and into next week. That's our reading schedule for next week. All right. Chapters one and chapter two. Um, chapter one uh, has to deal with prehistory, uh, prehistoric things, Neanderthals, those types of things. Chapter two, uh, the main focus is going to be on uh, the area known as Mesopotamia, right, which is the beginnings of civilization. Okay, uh, I will give you uh, in the Canvas um, modules, uh, I will give you the specific uh, page numbers that I want you to focus on. Uh, will, those will be announced. B 
because we're not going to be reading. I'm not going to make you responsible for the whole chapter. That's just, that's a cruel and unusual punishment, in my opinion. Uh, to make you uh, responsible and read uh, the entire chapter. There's only certain things within each chapter that we're going to focus on. Does that make sense? All right. Because if you just, if, you, if you're reading about, so for instance, like within chapter two, you know, we're going to be getting into things like Mesopotamia and Egypt. Uh, but there's also a lot of other cultures and stuff within chapter two that we're not going to focus on for next week. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to give you the specific page numbers and stuff and you focus on those and we'll all be good to go. Um, secondly, next week, uh, we're going to have uh, two things uh, that are going to be due if you're worrying about like, you know, what to do and what do I got to do and those types of questions. All right. Uh, so during next week, uh, we'll have uh, our second forum post and we'll have our first CPA, uh, which is the, uh, the prep uh, activities that you uh, hopefully read about in the syllabus. If not, I'll explain them more here in a little bit. Um, those are uh, both uh, going to be due uh, at the latest by class time on September the 1st, which is the following Tuesday. Does that make sense? Okay, so you got the entire week next week to work on forum post number two and CPA number one. All right, um, and basically what that CPA number one is going to be is you're going to work on uh, and I'll explain it all in the Canvas uh, thing. It'll be all sort of, I'll run through exactly what we need to do with it. <clears throat> Basically what you're doing is you're working on a couple questions that you're gonna bring to a discussion that we're gonna have on that Tuesday, September the 1st. All right, so I guess for today, and I'll mention this a couple times, all right, and I'm gonna type this in caps. That doesn't mean I'm yelling at you, okay? But I'm just gonna type this all in caps because I feel that like, like it's important. All right. Um, the big question for this whole weekend and for next week is what do you believe are the major characteristics that make civilization happen? Okay. That's the big question for next week. So when you're going to go through your reading, certain things are going to pop up to you. And what I want you to start doing is be like, start just thinking. And there, remember, here's, a, here's always my qualification. There's no <clears throat> kind of right or wrong answer to this as long as you give your effort, okay? So let me just kind of give you <clears throat> maybe, maybe an obvious one that, that you might choose to talk about. You know, when you're looking like, what actually makes a civilization? Like when people look at it and you're like, eh, yes, that's a civilization. What's one of the first things? Oh, I don't know. Uh, how about like writing, some sort of language? Okay. If a culture has some sort of written language, then what we do as people is we look at it and you're like, okay, your that civilization is a little bit more advanced, a little bit more qualified to be a civilization if people are able to speak and communicate with one another, not just verbally, but written, all right? Uh, that, that's usually generally the hallmark of what makes civilizations happen. And there's 10 to 15 other things that you guys can decide on next week uh, what you think is, more, is most important, okay? So also one of the things that I do with this class is, you know, for, uh, you know, quizzes and tests and those types of things, uh, I'm not about tricking students, all right? Um, one of the biggest things that I hated when I was in college uh, was professors who like would go over stuff and then you would get to the test and you sit down for the test and you'd be like, what the bleep is this? Like, we didn't go over any of this stuff. And it's like, you know, and the professor like sits there with like some sort of tricky grin on their face and, you know, and he, they, they twist their mustache like, 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 like I'm doing right here. And they go, meh, gotcha. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, even though I do have kind of a sinister mustache that I do like to twist, but I'm not, I'm not a villain. Okay. I'm always going to tell you what's going to be on the quizzes and tests. All right. Because that's the, that's, 
what history is all about. It's not about, you know, talking to you about the Egyptians and then throwing in a question about like, what date exactly was the pyramid constructed? That's just stupid. I hate classes like that. So what I do is I have lots of questions where you got to think about it for a minute and choose one of many possible answers. I like, did you guys ever read those books when you were little kids? I, I like to read these books when I was a little kid. It was like choose your own adventure books. Do you remember those things? You know, it was like, and if you want to go through the door, turn to page 65. And if you don't want to go through the door, turn to page 23. Like, I used to love those books. You know, you'd go through the door and you'd fall through the trap door and you'd get killed. And you're like, ah, you know, um, no. Okay, great. I'll talk to you guys later. Um, so one of the things that we want to look at, all right, uh, for all of these questions is you're going to be all, always choosing what you think is most important. All right. Um, so some people are going to say writing is most important. Some people are going to say, oh, I don't know, the ability to build buildings, the ability to build big things that stick around forever. That is the hallmark of a civilization. All right. Some people are going to choose different types of things. And that's the way the class is going to go next week. Okay. Um, so there's going to be two things due next week. Uh, there's going to be, uh, I'm going to put up next week for your uh, watching and listening uh, pleasure, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, to basically uh, video walkthroughs of notes. Okay. So I'm going to have PowerPoints that are going to go over notes and what I think is most important from chapters one and two. And what I'll do is, instead of just going over them on Zoom like this, which is extremely boring, I'm just going to post a video of me kind of walking through them and seeing what I think is most important. Okay. And then you guys can click on that video, like I said, whenever you want, nine in the morning, nine at night, uh, and get the notes that you need uh, that will help you uh, to take the quizzes, the tests, uh, and to answer some of the questions. So basically next week's going to run itself. Um, I will, like I said, be available for any type of questions that you have for me, uh, but uh, we will not be meeting on Zoom uh, Tuesday or Thursday of next week. Uh, is everybody cool with that? Can I get some thumbs? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, now for today, uh, let's talk here for, you know, 12 more minutes or, you know, or so uh, about uh, what we want to do uh, with some questions for today. So uh, does uh, uh, anybody have uh, syllabus questions? Uh, if you uh, kind of, if you want to raise your hand, you can unmute yourself, you can type them into the chat. Um, Floors open for uh, you know a couple of minutes for uh, syllabus questions. Uh, I'll let you guys uh, ask away if if not. Uh, and I'll just sit here and stare off into the distance. Anyone? Bueller. I have a non-syllabus question. Ah yes, uh, Philip. Uh, Non-syllabus questions are just as good as any other type of questions. I am a uh, equal opportunity uh, question answer. The videos with you going over notes and whatnot, mm -hmm. will those be up like indefinitely or will they only be up for a certain amount of time? Oh, no, no, no. no th those will be up permanently. Uh, so those videos, uh, I am not, uh, there are within this course, and I'll type this uh, up here on the, on the chat. Uh, there are going to be throughout this entire semester very few time constraints for you guys. Okay, uh, I don't like putting time constraints on students because everybody does work at their own pace and everybody does work at different times. All right, um, so I'm not going to, like I said, put up videos and be like, you better view this between 11 and noon on Tuesday and then off it goes, too bad. No, you just, it'll be up for however you want to watch it, however many times you want to watch it. The quizzes and the tests, okay? So on a week, in, on a week where we'll have a quiz and a test, now that's one of the things with the syllabus, I didn't put up specific dates that we're gonna have the quizzes and tests, all right? The only thing that is specific is 
when the final exam is going to be. And that's going to be that week of November 30th through December the 3rd. That's the only thing that is solid set in stone. Uh, the reason is, is that these online courses move at different paces sometimes. We, and my classes always move at different paces. Sometimes students get interested in something and we stay on a particular subject for longer than I had anticipated. Okay. For instance, last year during the, you know, during the fall, students really got into and we, we really wanted to talk about the Egyptian gods. People got kind of into that and it was fun. You know, we talked about the different types of gods that the Egyptians believed in and we stuck on it for an extra day or two, you know, and, and I'm not like a regimented kind of authoritarian that's like, no, the syllabus says we're done with Egypt and we're done. And therefore we'll have a quiz on it. I, you know, I'm just not going to do that. So nothing is really going to have a time constraint on it. Okay. Um, other than the fact that, like I said, I'll publish the quiz or test when we have our first one, you know, in, 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 uh, uh, not next week, but the week after we'll probably have, have our first uh, quiz and I'll publish it, you know, on Tuesday and you'll have, from that Tuesday to the following Tuesday to work on it. All right, and you can take it on Monday, or you can take it on Sunday, you can take it on Saturday, you can take it whenever you want. Okay, great. Uh, any other questions uh, that anyone uh, has uh, for me uh, at all? Kirsten, interesting, uh, are, you, are you like, like your profile picture, is that like, are you like, it's an interesting one. You look good. Are you like driving? I, that's always my favorite is when uh, uh, I had a few students in the spring that joined my Zoom classes while they were driving. And I'm like, Jesus, like, stop. You know, and you, you would just see like the, they would have the camera tilted upwards and you could see out the sunroof. And I'm like, what, what, what are we doing here? You know, don't join my class if you're driving. All right. I guess you could. I guess you could run it through your, you know, if you got Bluetooth or something, you could run the audio. Don't join video. That would be scary. All right. Pay attention to the stoplights. Nobody has any other questions. What the hell? What's wrong with you guys? Did I explain it that well? Man. Good for me. I have a question about the driving thing. <laughs> Trinity, yes. About the driving thing, okay. Well, it's kind of like a... Don't drive in Zoom. Well, my next class is um, in 15 minutes after this one, and it's at Thomas More. Oh. And I live 20 minutes away from there. Uh -huh. So I might have to drive in Zoom. Okay. Um, just don't, uh, don't drive in Zoom and then like try and like watch what we're doing. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah, you can, you, you can drive an audio Zoom. You know? <laughs> Don't let me put yeah. that constraint on you. Um, yeah, I, you know that that's perfectly fine. But like I said, I'm not going to be uh, not going to be a big stickler on that. I don't know why they did that, but <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, anybody else got anything? for questions like syllabus or Zooming questions? Nothing at all. Jeez, everybody having a good day though so far? I mean, you know, we'll, we'll be chilling out here for a couple more minutes. I'm gonna show you some things and we'll go over some, uh, some specific things about the, uh, the stuff I want you to focus on over the weekend. Everybody having a good day for the most part? Probably better day than Tom Brenneman's having. Ugh. I don't think we'll be seeing uh, Tom anytime soon. <laughs> I like Thanks. that joke. That was a good one. That was really good. Hey, there you go. Plus five points for laughing. Anyone who laughs at my jokes gets plus five uh, random bonus points. <laughs> All right. Um, Feel free to throw in any questions here uh, as we finish up. Like I said, we'll be, well, let's do maybe five, seven more minutes here uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll take a break for the weekend. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Since it's not thundering and lightning and storming, I'm gonna try and share my screen. 
All right, and we'll see how well this goes. Uh, this may be the poo-poo platter again, uh, but we'll see. Um, I'm gonna show you one of the slides, all right, from the PowerPoints that we're gonna be going over next week. <clears throat> give me, uh, once, once this shows up on your screen, uh, try and give me a couple thumbs up from people, that'd be great. Uh, people start starting to see this. Yes, okay, great, thank you. What are the essential characteristics of civilization? Okay, um, this is, guys, this is the question that I want to guide us the next 10 days or so, okay? So when you're going through your reading, okay, so for instance, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, give you a few page numbers here to focus on. I'm going to give you a few things uh, to look at, all right, uh, those types of things. So this is, this is a big one. What are the essential characteristics of a civilization? All right, that's the big thing that I want everybody to focus on, okay? Um, so there's a few different things you can do with, with the book, okay? Uh, you can be, you know, a, a nerd like me, because I'm a history geek, and, and you can print out the text and put it in, you can make, you know, like a three hole punch and you can put the text in a little binder like, like this, you know, if you like to do it like that and then you can sort of make your way through the pages and highlight stuff. Or you can, you know, do it on your phone, you can do it on your computer, you can do whatever the heck you want with the text. All right, it's open source, you can, you can kind of do it as, as you please. All right? But one of the things is I will be referring to page numbers. Okay, um, within the uh, narrated PowerPoints and within our classes, I'll be referring to page numbers. So sometimes that is easier if you do print it out. Okay, uh, but the page numbers are listed uh, if you scroll through uh, that PDF file uh, that you can download. All right, um, so some big things to look at over the weekend and, and to focus in on. Okay, um, on page three. Okay, uh, on page three. Uh, of that text, uh, there's some questions that are guiding your reading, okay? Uh, I want you to focus on, for this chapter, I want you to really focus in on questions five, six, and seven, okay? Uh, these questions say, what was hunter-gatherer experience like? And you're like, oh, Jesus, Egan, hunter-gatherer, what are we like, am I in third grade again? Like, I went over this in like third grade. All right. Yeah, I, I know. I know. It just, it, 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 we got to start at the beginning. Okay. And what I want to kind of get out of it, guys, is that question there what was like hunter gatherer. And then they start talking about agriculture. Okay. Um, that's the big thing from chapter one that I really want you to focus on is human beings go from really, really, really small groups of people like 20 to 30 tops, okay, to larger groups, all right, in the hundreds and then eventually into the thousands because of a thing that we still use today and is very important to Ohio and Kentucky and Indiana economies, agriculture, okay. Um, Basically, and, and the cool thing that I really like about what your book says about agriculture, all right, um, is on page 12. It's a really cool quote. And I've never heard it before um, until I read this book. The book says, agriculture is the domestication of plants. <laughs> pretty, pretty funny to think about. And, and they're right, all right? Um, Agriculture is the domestication of plants, okay? Uh, so let's take here two, three minutes. D does, that, does everybody or does anyone care to uh, unmute themselves or throw it into the chat and explain what is domestication and how does it happen? Anybody know what domestication means? If you do, you know, raise your hand. You can unmute yourself or throw it into the chat. Anybody at all? So th this is Garrett. Uh, Hi, Garrett. Domestication is kind of like it starts out as taming, but then you eventually, you know, you breed it so that it kind of succumbs to the will of man. 
and yeah. it's usable for uh, man's for man's purposes for man's needs. That's Good. a great term. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, you use the term breeding. It's a great term here. Thank you. Um, so think about it like, like, like dogs, right? Everybody loves dogs. If you don't love dogs, then, then I may throw you out of this class. All right. But, uh, dogs, how many different breeds of dogs are there? Why? Because what happened was, was people way back when, when we talk about what we're going to look at in this chapter, tens of thousands of years ago, there was just the wild dog, you know, basically the wolf. Okay. And they were kind of not nice animals. <laughs> if you know what I mean, have you ever seen a wolf? But then eventually what started to happen is wolves kind of started living closer and closer to human habitations and cities. And then people started finding that some wolves were nicer than others. And some of them were kind of like fatter and slower than the other ones. And they would kind of cuddle up next to you. And so what people did is they would then take that one. That's what domestication is, friends, is you take the one that has the characteristics that you like, and then you kind of separate it and breed out those characteristics that you like into the next one. Think about, think about pigs, for instance, okay? The pigs that you see at the local fair or along the side of the road when you're driving, that's not what piggies looked like 10,000 years ago, okay? Pigs look like the thing that's on the side of like the Arkansas Razorback football helmet. That's what the original pig looked like. It was an ugly ass animal and it had giant horns and tusks that would stab you if you tried to get near it. But the thing is, is that people started to realize that ugly looking thing over there, that thing tastes pretty good if you can get it on a fire. Okay. Uh, and, you know, the original humans, you know, making some bacon. <laughs> Delicious. All right. So what started to happen is, is when people would catch that pig, that boar with the tusks, what people started to realize is, hey, um, the reason we caught that one is because that was the slowest one of the pack. And so instead of killing it and eating it, why don't we catch another slow one, make the two slow ones have little piggy children, and then they'll breed slow ones, and then we'll take the slowest, fattest one out of that group, and we'll separate that one out and make it have slower and fatter little piggies until you get what you got. Does that make sense? That's how domestication works. You do the same thing with plants. You do the same thing with, with things like corn. All right, there's all kinds of different species of corn that ancient human beings dealt with, and some of them tasted good, and some of them tasted like bleep, okay? And so you would, obviously, you would take the corn that tasted good, and you would take the seeds from that and plant that corn instead of the corn that tasted like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be eating that corn, all right? You would take that corn and feed it to your new fat little piggy that you bred, okay? So those are the things, guys, that, that we're going to be looking at in chapter one, okay? And you're probably like, well, all right, that's much better than reading, you know, Homo, uh, uh, homo erectus and Homo habilis uh, uh, came out of Africa in the year 10,000. Uh, I hate those classes, okay? We're going to be talking about other things that are much more interesting than that, okay? So that's the big things, guys, that I want you to focus on in Chapter 1 over the weekend. Okay. And uh, I guess, I mean, you know, I, I will, we'll get more comfortable with each other. My hope is, you know, we'll, we'll get more comfy with each other and you guys will get more um, chatty uh, in the chat room. That's okay. We're just starting out. You guys don't know me very well yet. I'm kind of learning who you are. I'll find more out about you on your forum posts and your intro posts. The last thing I do want to mention before we take off is to always make sure when we do our forum posts, always make sure, ladies and gents, that you respond 
to at least one of your classmates on those forum posts, okay? If you look at the rubric, that's five points out of 25 is your response to a classmate, okay? And far too often, um, sometimes people either forget to do it or they, for some reason, don't want to do it, and they immediately start with a 20 out of 25. And if you guys do your quick Thomas More math, then you're immediately starting with only an 80% that you can possibly score, okay? Also, guys, the responses to classmates, and you can ask other people who have had my class before on campus and elsewhere, those responses, those replies, those are huge areas where you can score the very enviable in Professor Egan's classes bonus points, all right? If you send a message and reply to like, you know, two or three people and have cool interactions with them, all right, that say, I really like that, uh, and here's why. Then that's, guys, that's where people start scoring 26, 27, 28, 29, and 25 points. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you make the forum a cool, kind of fun place to be for a little while, then I will reward you uh, with bonus points on that, okay? So take advantage of those forums, reply to a couple of your buddies here in class, and get some extra points going, okay? Those are, those are really easy opportunities uh, to score some extra points. So uh, that's kind of that uh, for today. Um, next week, remember, no class, meetings on Zoom Tuesday and Thursday, but there's going to be um, some stuff to do on Canvas. We're going to have a couple PowerPoints up. We're going to be reading through chapters one and two. I'll give you the specific page numbers uh, on Canvas. And then uh, we got a couple things uh, that are going to be due uh, by the following Tuesday, September the 1st, when we will meet uh, back in person at uh, 11 a.m., not 11.15. Sorry about that. All right, but the next time we will meet on a Zoom in person, September 1, 11 a.m. Okay, is everybody clear with that? Good to go. I can't believe it's, how the heck is it going to be September already? Where the hell did my summer go? Jeez. And even last night, it was like, ugh. It, even, it like felt and kind of smelled like September out, and I was like, oh, no. And some people really like fall. I'm okay with fall, but I like when you walk outside and you just get slapped in the face with heat. That's when you know it's nice out, right? No? Okay. No, everybody's a little bit different. No, get out of here, Egan. You and your love of summer, we disagree, therefore, we cannot be friends. All right. Um, friends, it's been a good 50 minutes or so, all right? So uh, I say cheers to you, and I say have a good weekend. And if you got any questions, don't hesitate to send me Canvas messages, all right? Work your way through Canvas next week, and I'll see you right back here, September 1st, 11 a.m. Cool? Awesome. All right, guys, all the best. Stay safe and have fun because you're in college and that means having fun. See you later.